what no one ever tells you about your 20s. You'll still have no clue who you really are, and you will be the last one to know it. When I was a kid, I thought I'd have it all figured out. By the ancient age of 28, I'd have a glamorous husband, a successful career, possibly a castle. <laughs> Instead, I had a roommate, a subway pass, and a credit card balance the size of the third world GMP. But I was happy. I had great friends, New York, fun guys like Calvin to spend time with. What more did I need? Actually, I was about to find out. I just didn't know it yet. This one's for Franny. Not so much that there's pizza in your bed, mm -hmm. it's that it's the second time this week. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? Ooh, anchovies and pineapple. Very bold. So, so I get late night takeout cravings. I never said that I was domestic. Oh, mm -hmm. I have a confession to make too. Do you? Mm -hmm. I'm not after. You can't stay tonight, you know. You know, I, I can't be late tomorrow again. Okay. I can't, Calvin. I just read your last theater review and had to meet you. I've been waiting for an editor like you my whole life. Pulitzer be damned. Because I, genius that I am, talked him into doing a series of essays for us. Take that, Vanity Fair. I want the assignment. But you're a very fine entertainment editor, right? I mean, movie stars and those little book praises. I mean, that's your niche, right? Glory in it. Carpe librum. But I edited the Indachi feature when Joan had her goiter surgery. You said that you liked my work. Veniva has seniority. Ergo, the job. What job? I totally respect that. I do, on the other hand, if I could just say in my defense, look, quiz me, okay? I have, I've read everything that he's ever written. His work is, is God. It's an explosion of pure verbal lyricism and why couldn't I have said that to him five minutes ago? But my point is, is that I know how he thinks and I know what he needs and not giving me a shot at this would be a mistake. Please give me a chance. There's something vaguely Darwinian about this that uh, piques my interest. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set up a little meeting and the rest is up to you. Oh, thank you. A little, little less, a little less hugging. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
was I thinking? I mean, the guy won a Pulitzer, and I think I'm good enough to edit him. Where'd I get the Hubers? Well, for one thing, you know what the hell a Hubers is. Hey, do you want to borrow my shoes? Mm -mm, too sexy. I need something. This is that I'm wise and capable and do not usually walk into doors. Well, that one just says Hooters. This new pillow I'm on is totally screwing with my hormones. I feel like I'm smuggling Zeppelins under here. Remind me to feel sorry for you when I get boobs. I'm so excited that I'm nauseous. Mm. So. How do I look? Like a features editor. Francis McKenzie. Hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, my father has a saying that a woman is never late if she's worth waiting for. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. How's the head? Uh, better. <laughs> Good. Thank you. So, tell us about your process. Well, it's very complex. Usually, I stare at the page till the terror recedes enough to write. <laughs> so, um, what sort of themes were you thinking of exploring? An examination of the state of love. Uh, attraction, fidelity, commitment. Oh, that's interesting. I'm sure Franny here would feel guilty editing you. There'd be so little work to do, right, Franny? <laughs> <laughs> well, not really. I mean, there's a few things that... Really? Oh, go on. You may be over fond of aphorism and too afraid of imagery at times, and your arguments do tend to lose focus and stray into repetition. I mean, maybe a little tiny bit. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think what she meant to say. No, that I don't. confess, I, I usually don't um, get criticism from prospective editors. I can imagine. Which is kind of why you need to, though. I think when you're as good as you are, people tend to stop asking for better. Now, I have more faith in your talent than that, and I think that you do, too. Interesting. Look, I may have been a bit harsh in the end. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, if I'm gonna trust your instincts, I have to know who I'm dealing with, right? We're gonna have to get completely <laughs> naked, figuratively speaking. Where did you go to school? Columbia. Where are you from? New York, just outside of New York. You know what? Actually, nowhere near New York, uh, a tiny town just north of um, Toronto. What's your favorite novel? Ulysses. Impressive. Now, tell me the real one. Gone with the Wind? No. No. Why would you possibly admit that out loud? You said to get completely naked, oh, so... Well, leave some socks on, woman. And clearly you need me as much as I need you. <laughs> so, hopefully something like good taste will rub off on you. All right, let's get to it. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Twelve months. Twelve examinations of the way love shapes us, makes us, this is the quest I begin, the journey I hope to take you on. And in the end, I hope to uncover these many little truths for all of us solitary voyagers. So what do you think? He sounds really arrogant. Arrogant? Mm -hmm. How can you say that? Okay. Okay, what do you think? 
kind of boring. You don't have to do that, you know. The I stove leave, always shorts. I leave in a week. I would feel much more comfortable if I knew that you weren't going to starve while I'm gone. But I don't cook. How? I mean, what is he even trying to say in that article, like, in English? It's about divining the nature of love. <laughs> Are you saying that you could do better? No, no. I'm saying I'd be too smart to try. Oh. Okay, how about this one? Um, kind of desperate. Uh. Okay, here. Describe green to me. You know I can't describe green to you. Exactly. And that's just a color, so what makes Writer Boy think that he can explain love? Okay. Kind of tardy? Yes. We have a winner. Don't wait up for me. Okay, bye. Have fun. Thanks, I will. Oh, Calvin. <clears throat> my work here is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this is classic. So now you're shooting down my entire thesis. Look, I'm not saying that opposites don't attract, okay? They do. I'm just saying that they don't last, you know? It's mostly a physical. Well, meaning what? Real love is, um, strictly mental? <laughs> We're forbidden love? Sure. Real love, like uh, Tristan and Isolde love. Oh, love. Yeah. No, not yet. You? Oh, yeah. All the time. Highly recommend Look, it. I'm just saying that the real stuff, I think, is based on a kind of common commonality. You know, like a meeting of like minds kind of thing. Oh, well, now, you and I are like minds. Yeah. So you're saying that you're attracted to me? <laughs> you're not just saying, uh, you, you know, rest of curiosity for the article. You can't ask me that. Sure I can. It just did. I'm stalling. I am not. I'm, you're stalling. I am not stalling. I'm just saying that I never thought about it. But um, maybe we should. No. Hey, I have a, a showing. A friend has a showing tomorrow night at the Regency. You, you should come with. Huh? We can keep talking about this together. Okay. All right. Bye. Hey. Oh. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. It's amazing how many pairs of underwear you need for a three-month tour. It's like six. Seven. That was a joke, Fran. You okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm out of it. Ugh. Probably just sensitive because I'm leaving. It's understandable. I'm quite a loss. I'm going to miss you. Three months. God, you know, it's kind of longer than we've been seeing each other. Right? Oh, I'd be swarmed by foreign chicks who oh. just love jazz. Sure. But they won't be you. Calvin? Look, we never really talked about what the understanding was going to be while you're gone. Personally, I was hoping that you would stay at home and pine. Pine? And knit me things. <laughs> yeah. Sweater. <clears throat> I'm not an idiot fan. We're early days here. I don't own you. But I want you to know I'm going to come looking for you the moment I get back. Kenzie, who are you here with? Um, Michael Tate. Um, T A. She's with me. Hi. Hi. You look lovely. Thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I practically lived at the MoMA when I moved to New York. <laughs> I think afterwards, art is definitely my next love. Yeah, I got lucky. Um, I sort of grew up around writers and painters my whole life. Yeah. What? 
What is under that smile? Oh, <laughs> it's just, um, you know, I've, I've kind of fantasized about this sort of night since I moved to New York. Oh, it's not that I fantasized about you, <laughs> per se. I mean, not in, in a good no. way or a bad way. <laughs> not, sometimes I just, I have to stop. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think your thoughts are the one thing you don't edit. Come on, I want to introduce some people. This is a Dr. Tim Campbell. Word of advice. If you ever start feeling like life is finally exactly where you wanted it to be, duck. Because fate's about to throw you a curve. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. No. I can't even look, just tell me when it changes. Did you pee on this? Yes, Marina, I peed on it, okay? That's the way that it works. Just please, 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 not now, not now. Okay, just be cool, because there's no way that you're pregnant. No way. I swear to God, if Calvin got me pregnant, I will, I will, I will break every finger on his guitar hand. I will break him. I can't get that. I don't have the cheekbones. Please, God, please, I will give up sex and chocolate and sex involving chocolate. I think it's done. What, is, what does two lines mean? <sighs> You're definitely pregnant. Sorry. Go ahead. I'd say you were ten weeks. Ten weeks. Wow. Can I see it? Not yet. But would you like to hear the heartbeat? Already. Oh, you'd be surprised how quickly it all happens. I know what a shock it can be for my new patients. You go about your life and walk around thinking nothing's changed. Meanwhile, there's this. That's its heart. Mm hmm. Sounds scared. I guess we already have something in common. You do have options, Franny. We need to talk about them because you're going to have to make some decisions very soon. It's hard to describe how I feel. I just don't have the Pleasure. Neither, actually. I'm here uh, visiting my parents. <laughs> Good luck with that. 
Thank you. I love my family. But the closer you are to your parents, the more space you need from them at a certain point in your life. A lot of space, like an international border between you kind of space. They're kind of crazy and completely smothering, but they're mine. And I still need their approval. Oh, I'm actually heading back. Tomorrow I have to work in the mornings. Oh, interesting. There's oh, my Franny. Oh, it warms my heart to see you pet. What a treat. Hi, Dad. Oh, oh, to the kitchen, I'm doing this. I've Go been on. reading some of your recent articles. Really? That is wonderful stuff. Thank you, Dad. Wonderful. Dear, uh, put the kettle on, and I'll join you girls in a minute. Mm -hmm. Can I help you with the party prep? What are you not telling me? What? Mom, save the head shrinking for your patients. Okay, nothing's wrong. I'm just here because I love you and I missed you and I'm a tiny bit pregnant. John, Franny and I are going out. So, feel free to offer congratulations. <laughs> You've got to give me a little bit of time to process this. The last time we talked, there wasn't anyone special, and now there is a baby. <laughs> I assume this wasn't planned. Not so much. Well, that's fine. I mean, you're a healthy young woman. You have sexual needs. Mom. Dear. I have many clients your age, and the amount of casual sex that you are all having is, well, astounding. Mom, I'm not one of your patients, okay? I'm not crazy, I'm just pregnant. Please don't call them crazy. Tell me about the boy. <laughs> He's a musician. <laughs> Tell me something I'd like about the boy. Well, his name is Calvin Putty. He comes from a long line of meatpackers, I think. Uh-huh, and you have told him, this singing meat packer. That's kind of a funny story, really, because uh, you'll like this one. He left the country before I could tell him. Aha. Uh -huh. So you will raise the child in New York alone. It's not like it's never been done before. I I'll be fine. I've thought of everything. Francis, hear me out. I'm your mother. I love you. But I also know you, and sweetheart, you just aren't the kind of woman who can do this on her own. I am doing this, okay? And mom, I would really like your support because I'm actually kind of terrified right now. Franny. Miss me yet? Calvin? Sorry, you're gonna have to speak up. It's a lousy connection. Uh, where are you? The Dolomites. Can't find it on a map, but they love us here. Until next time. So, what's new with you? Oh, well, you know, nothing new. I'm, uh, I'm in Toronto. I'm behind deadline. I'm pregnant. Vagrant? Pregnant? Gotta be louder, Fran. I can't hear. Oh, for God's sakes, Calvin, you knocked me up. I'm having your baby. Did you hear me? Are you there? <laughs> Lousy connection. So? So? I think he hung up on me. <laughs> the important thing is that you told him. This is really good. So let's go home, and what you need right now is to be surrounded by your family. <laughs> Our family? 
Yeah. Tina, vagina. Mom, you should have seen Robin today. She did the best roles in kinder gym. So, Dad, Sandy and I loved our Christmas cruise so much, we're sending you and Mom for your gift. Oh, no, you really oh. shouldn't. That's wow. too much. No, no, it's not the expense. It's the thought that counts. I wish people would say what they mean. So, I'm pretty much going to go on and on bragging about myself tonight, mostly to distract everyone from that very small penis Franny saw in the kiddie pool that one summer, <laughs> but also to compensate for my tense marriage and overly medicated pill-popping wife here. It's true, he will. Oh, and Fran, I'm going to talk incessantly to Mom about parenting to make you feel left out and to distract myself from the gaping suck hole of a wound where my life used to be. Oh, and I hate you for still having a waist. Aunt Granny, your daydreaming again snuck out of it. Happy, Happy anniversary. anniversary! Happy anniversary! Here, here. <laughs> Madeline. Oh. Ah. <laughs> What's up, New York? Too good for champagne now? No. Come on, since when don't you drink? Richard, she doesn't have to drink if she doesn't want to. What is she, pregnant or something? Congrats. Richard. No, no, I mean, that's great. Just because we've been trying years and have five dogs and a freaking ferret turning our house into a dog damn kennel just to fill the void. Well, I'm sure all Franny had to do was one too many shots of liquor and a sailor. Woohoo! That's no reason to be bitter. In fact, a toast to my little sister. My knocked up little sister. The Yorkshire pudding, please. Can someone pass the gravy? Gravy's coming at you. Dad. You've always done things your own way, Franny. Not always things I choose for you. But it always worked out in the end. Congratulations, pet. Thanks, Dad. All right, let's uh, eat. Mm -hmm. Next. Excuse me. Oh no, not not you. I barely know you. It's silly. <laughs> uh huh. Residency. Manhattan. You live in New York, but your citizenship is Canadian? May I see your visa, please, ma'am? Um, it, uh, just expired <clears throat> recently. I mean, expired is such a strong word, right? I, I much prefer lapsed. It says it expired two years ago. So, isn't this interesting? Living illegally on American soil? Did you really think you could get away with it, Ms. McKenzie, if that is your real name? What do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I'll be sure to pass that along to the taxpayers. You can forget about this flight. You're not gonna be crossing our borders anytime soon. But that's ridiculous. I have a job to get to. Look, I'm not even from Canada anymore. I'm a New Yorker. Ma'am, you do not raise your voice to me. I am a government officer. Oh, please, you are a hairnet away from a fast food cashier. <sighs> Look, that is my hormones talking. That's not me, okay? I'm sorry. Look. Girl to girl, woman to woman. I can't handle this stress right now because I'm actually with child. Oh. Well, in that case. 
Under Article 5, Sub 7, you are hereby barred from entering the United States for a period of no less than one year. But you can't do this. I... Uh, Have I... a good day. I'd offer you fries with that. Power fresh out. Next! There's a little polyester-wearing despot. She's probably got fired from Smart Mart. Now she's all like, woohoo, look at me. I'm a border guard. I can make your life a living hell. Franny, this is silly. You have lived in New York for nearly 10 years. You surely have a visa. There is a small possibility that I may have forgotten to renew it recently. Francis. Well, I'm sure that there's a loophole, OK? I'm sure that I can, I can contest it and, and reapply. In the present immigration climate. How far along are you? 11 weeks. Why? I hate to be the one to break this to you, dear. Don't even say it, Mom. You are not going back to New York until you have had this baby. So now I'm pregnant and homeless. What do you expect me to do? You, you want me to send for my stuff and wait it out here in the, in the tundra? Do you have an alternative suggestion? No. Not even a little bit. You'll stay with us, pet. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on, just please, 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 please work. Pronto. Hello, Mr. Halshford. Hi, this is Franny McKenzie. Look, I'm, I missed my flight. My visa was denied. This is your somewhat peculiar way of asking for a raise. What? Oh, no, no, not that kind of visa. Look, I, uh, I'm stuck in Toronto, but, but don't panic. I mean, nobody needs to panic. It's a global village, right? I mean, I can totally, totally keep working with Michael from here. And how long do you intend to remain one of the global village people? Oh, not long. Just, you know, a few months. Possibly, uh, 12. It's long enough to have a um, baby. I see. The next sound you hear will be me hanging up. It's not fair, you know? I mean, I graduated from Columbia twice. I just worked so hard to get to this stupid little town, and now I'm back, and I'm trapped, and I'm about to get really, really fat. Listen, Halsford seems fine with you handling Tate's stuff up there, if he is. This is a conversation that I'm dying to have. I adore you. Please take me away and love me forever. By the way, I'm having another man's baby. Have you, um, have you heard from Calvin? The silence count? I could put a hit on him, you know. I know people. All right. I've slept with people who say they know people. Oh my god, Marina, that's Michael. I have to go, okay? Wish me luck. <clears throat> Hello? So, just heard the big news from Hallsford. Um, congratulations. So what do you think? I think there are easier ways to get out of a second date with me. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you sure you can do this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that it's going to be hard, but uh, I think that I'll probably be a good mom, you know? I meant the articles. Right, right. Of course you did. It's just, I've never worked long distance before, Franny, and um, it's not organic, and I, to be frank, it makes me nervous. Look, Michael, I know that the situation is not ideal, okay, but I take my work very seriously, and I swear to you that we can do this. Just please, please, please trust me. I do. Of course I do. Um, I'll have the next draft in tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Sorry I'm late. Oh my god, you're here. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. I'm so glad you're here. No. Okay. <laughs> How long are you staying? Well, as long as you'll let me. Well, what about your uh, your dance? 
<laughs> well, I think our first kid is a little more important. Easy, buddy. I'm freaked out enough being pregnant, and uh, I'm not sure what kind of commitment I'm ready for. I'm not asking for any. <laughs> Francis tells us you're a musician. He's very talented. Mm -hmm. Anything that we might have heard? I don't think so. It's um, jazz, mostly. Oh, well, we like jazz. That um, uh, Diana Krall girl. Oh, she's lovely. Actually, it's experimental. We use found instruments. Found instruments. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, you know... <sighs> Sometimes I'll play a balloon. Or an electrified rake. I see. Um, good money in, in that, is there? Is there a bathroom? Um, down the hall to the right. There goes the gene pool. I think I have angina. So you guys really hate him, huh? No, Ooh. no, actually. I am undecided. Apart from the fact that he is a borderline musician with an affection for gardening tools. He is the father of your child, and he is here to help you. And you have no idea how valuable those things are to you right now, but we do. So, he can stay? He can stay. Blood? The 
the blood the blood I expected but the um the mucus not so much mm. mucus screeching baby popping out like that it's just like watching alien easy buddy okay I'm the one who has to do it I know I am so sorry. <laughs> hey, um, as long as we both can't sleep, do you want a Christmas gift, Bailey? Yes. Your washer and dryer? <laughs> yes. I got you a washer and dryer. I know you've been missing New York, so I figured if we can't go to Manhattan, why not bring Manhattan to us? Oh my God. Calvin, this is amazing. How did you do this? This is Brooklyn Bridge. It's where we ended our first date. Yep, and it was raining. And you wouldn't kiss me because you said it would be a cliche. Mm -hmm. Temple Bar. Uh, yeah. It's where you kept kissing me until I agreed to take you home. I seem to remember it the other way around. Mm-hmm. Whatever. <sighs> you know, I realized the other day in all our amazing firsts, we missed a pretty important one. Our first dance. But you move like a gazelle. Oh, you're a liar. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thanks for staying. You have no idea how much I appreciate that you're here. Where else would I want to be? Baby, are you peeing on me? I think my water just broke. Oh, shoot! Shoot! Okay. Don't panic. I'm totally on it. Okay. Okay. I totally got you. Come on. <laughs> we are having a baby. We're having a baby. I know you're tired, but I need one more. Oh. Come on, Freddy. One big push. Pleasure yourself! <sighs> Calvin, I can't do this anymore. I can't. I'm sorry. I know, but we'll just okay. we'll come back in a few weeks, okay? okay. Please. Okay. Shh. You are doing so amazing right now. We are so close. Come on. Come on. Push, Brenny. Come on. I can see the head. Oh, no. I can't do this. I'm sorry. I quit. Okay. Hey. 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 I know how much you two want to meet each other. Hmm? You are so close. We just need one more push, okay? One more. One more. Okay. Good, Franny. Good. Keep it coming. That's it. And here's the baby. Does the father want to cut the cord? Yes.
a camera. That's his name. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's after my music mentor. Was I sleeping when you became the boss of me? Oh, so he gets your last name and the first name you pick for. Pardon me if I'd like to have some say in this by giving my firstborn a name that actually means something to me. Pick another one. Kill this. No. Bjorn. No. Ishmael. Definitely not. Lester. Ishmael. Lester. He kind of looks like a Lester. I know. Hi, Lester. It's nice to meet you. Hi, Lester. <laughs> I can see, like all dads, you're a pack animal now. Oh, yes. oh no, no, no. Hugs for fathers. Come on in. You know, I really think that we're going to have to cancel your brother's cruise. You're not ready. Mom, please go. Okay, Richard will kill me if I ruin his gift with my fecundity. She's right, dear. Let's let the kids breathe. All right, but I cannot overstress to you the importance of these first few weeks of development. Calvin, this is for you, too. Now, I've got you a selection of classical music to increase his spatial abilities and whale calls for verbal. You play the classical when he's feeding and the other when he's asleep. You look lost. You're lost. Call the travel agent. No. We'll cancel the trip. Mom, no, no, no. We just, we need... We need space to self-actualize as new parents. I completely respect that. Can Grandpa hold him, Lester? Watch his head. Calvin, why don't you put on some Mozart? Hmm? No. God, he's just so cute. I think he has your nose. I think he has your eyes. You know, I'm so far behind on deadline, I really should go do some work. I'll watch the spot today. The sooner you're done, the sooner you get to come play with us. Oh, you are so getting lucky tonight. Okay, not tonight, but I'll pencil you in for next month. <laughs> oh, you could be a singer, huh? Check out those lungs. Yeah, he'll stop yeah. Hey, he's not hungry, not wet, there's no fever, it's gotta be colic. Don't say colic, okay? Just please don't say colic. It says here that colic can last three months. You're not helping me, buddy! We check his bum again. I'm trying. Okay, it's the freaking origami. Oh wait, 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 look at the poo. What are we looking I for? I don't know, Calvin. Not yet. No. Calvin! 
I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just, I am all out of ideas, baby. She's been pumping for like six hours. Can you talk to her? I'll get faster. Hi. Hi, Franny. Hi. Mom, hi. Franny? What are you doing? I'm just storing some milk because, um... I really need a drink, Mom. Like a big one or some Dramamine, maybe. Horse tranquilizers, crack pipe. I don't care. Just please knock me out. Why don't you come with me? Okay. We're gonna go for a little walk in the dose. Oh, okay. Get some fresh air. Oh, will there be beer there? Go find your coat. Okay. Hi, Dad. Hi, Pet. We'll be back. Where did I go? I mean, I lost my apartment, my city, my friends, my waist. All I've got is what's left of my job, and, and Calvin. And Lester. <sighs> you are having a temporary identity crisis. It's normal. It gets better, I promise. Can I tell you something? Sure. I'm not so sure that I'm going to be any good at this. I wish I could offer you some panacea. But the truth is, being a mother is the hardest job there is. And you know, it never really stops being hard. But it never really stops being wonderful. And that is the deal. For the record, I still feel this close to going completely insane. Well, for the record, I've been feeling that way for almost 40 years. <laughs> Welcome to motherhood. Mr. Houseford. Oh, my God, look, I am, I am so sorry that I'm behind on, on deadline, but, um, 
Frankly, it's just been crazy here lately. <laughs> oh, well, now let's not be gauche and talk about business. You've got new life with you. I called to congratulate you. Now, Marina has something she wants to say to you. Granny? Marina? <laughs> Marina, what's going on? Mr. Hausford wants me to tell you that you're fired, Franny. They're putting Veneva on the Tate essays. I'm sorry, Franny. What's wrong? We're swimming. This will mark the end of our day. Weigh me down. Weigh me down. You're gonna have to hold my head up. In a whisper, you will hear me say, If this will mark Get some light. There. How are you doing? How am I doing? How am I doing? I'm unemployed. I'm living off my parents, and I don't know where my fat ass ends and my thighs begin. That good, huh? Yeah. Well. I know a little something that might cheer you up. <laughs> Someone is having a birthday. And it's... My birthday. Oh, that's great. That's just, that's great. So now I'm not just a loser. I'm a 29-year-old loser. I don't need a reminder about how old Surprise! I'm getting, Cal. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. You know what? Let's put this in perspective. You lost a job, not a limp. This isn't about the job. Okay, get up. We need to go for a walk. I don't, I don't feel like going outside. Franny, now. Okay, I am trying, Franny. I'm trying really hard to understand what you're going through. What do you want me to say? You want me to say that I'm happy with my life? That I'm exactly where I wanted to be? Nobody is exactly where they wanted to be. Hell, I gave up my band. Oh my I... god, you had to stop playing the balloon? I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I just... I'm not myself right now. And I think that that's pretty much the problem. So what are you trying to say? You regret having Lester? God, no. Don't twist this. I love him. But that is not some magic pill that means that this new life makes sense to me. It doesn't mean that we make sense to me. I just, I just don't want us to wake up one day and realize that the only reason we're together is because we had a kid. That's not gonna happen. How do you know? Because I'm in love with you, Franny. I love that you are smart about words and <laughs> clueless about life. That you're always in a hurry and <laughs> never on time. I even love the stuff that I hate about you. So, 
the real question is, are you in love with me? How am I supposed to know who I love when I don't even know who I am? How am I supposed to answer that question? I think you just did. Calvin. I'm sorry. A second bud look I know that I haven't been very good at this yet but that's gonna change what do you say we um we start over and from here on in it's gonna be all about you yeah <laughs> She'll never, she'll never wait till morning, though she loves the sun and the way it shines. There never was a warning, but it just started storming. We were out of time, let her shine. it suddenly gets easy but if you're lucky there's a certain point where it just starts to work where you begin to think maybe I'm not so terrible at this maybe I can do it on my own and then the real magic happens when you stop being scared about being a bad mom and just start becoming a good one I guess the scary truth is I had to have a child to stop being one. Hello? Lord, have I got news. Marina? Why are you whispering? How would you like your job back? 
<laughs> Benita is being fired as we speak. I know it's fantastic. Turns out Tate couldn't stand her. He claims she threw him off his track. So what does this have to do with me? He wants to fly up there to talk about rehiring you. What? When will he be coming? Uh, I don't know. I think he said, um, tomorrow. Nice. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Hi. I'll have a pea meal on a Kaiser. <laughs> and a, uh, a decaf grande non-fat cappuccino. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I'll have a, a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Two, please. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Mm, final booze mm -hmm. the Western sandwich. Not quite the rainbow room. Oh, God, please don't talk about New York. I miss it. You look great. You haven't changed. You expected hair rollers in a bathroom. <laughs> no, 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 but your life's different now. You're a single mom, and I need you to come here in person to make sure you're ready to work again. I am so ready to come back to work. Look, I know that I dropped the ball before, um, but I really feel like I'm getting my life back on track. You know, I'm, I'm firing on all cylinders, and, and you just hear everybody saying that you're permanently changed, that you're gonna be different forever, but I feel the same as I did before. I don't, I don't see it. There is absolutely no difference. I'm completely lactating right now, aren't I? <laughs> I, I am, okay. Milk? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're covered, thanks. <laughs> Leave it to me to have ironic breast milk. It was excellently timed. <sighs> I really like working with you. But I am up against the wall on these deadlines, so you have to be honest with me. How are you, Franny? Really? Honestly, well, this is the first business conversation I've had in eight months. I get less sleep than a surgical intern. I have baby vomit on my shoe. And the last book I read involved dishes running with spoons. <laughs> but Michael, I still know when your sentences are weak. I still know when your arguments run on. I'm a good editor and I'm ready to come back. So. Well, I hope you mean that literally. Can't be flying up here every time I need your fabulous brain. I've been pulling strings since you left. One of them gave. This is just a confirmation letter. My visa! My visa, my, you got me back my visa. <laughs> Michael! <laughs> Thank you. I really miss you. I'm going to New York! <laughs> <laughs> Today is the day I'm starting to see just where I'm from and where I want to be. Oh, so adorable. You could start my biological clock. But how did you end up with a fat baby? Ah, oh, Francesco. Bienvenuto. <laughs> oh, you're the little you just about sunk my magazine, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Ram? Yes. Like you've done a terrific job with Tate. And because I'm full and contain the multitudes, mm -hmm. I'm going to forgive you all the screw-ups. And what is this? Your new office. I'm giving you a sort of promotion. You're going to take over Veneva's responsibilities. And does this sort of promotion come with this sort of raise? <laughs> We've missed that dry sense of humor around here.
Hi. You look good. Oh. <laughs> Different. Thanks. Hi. How are you? Hi, how are you? So how do you want to do this? Well, I figure I'm off work before most of your gigs start, so I could drop them off in the morning and come get them um, around dinner, if that's okay with Fine. you. Ben's got a tour coming up pretty soon, so I need to find someone to cover while I'm away. Yeah, it should be no problem. So how have you go? been? <laughs> I'm meeting someone. Okay. <laughs> Granny, this is the part where you have to let him go. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I'm really glad you got your job back. I know what it means to you. God saved me from a small life or small love, from minivans and mediocrity, and from my suspicion that, in the end, the search is always better than the find. Well, that's amazing. It's depressing. It is. <laughs> well, don't hold back now. Well, I'm just, how can a life be small if it makes you happy? Well, oh, first the question, how can it make you happy if it's small? Because there's a difference between being small and being empty. Yes, sir. Well, what happened to the Franny who demanded something exceptional from life? Oh, look, don't worry about me, okay? I don't plan on settling for anything less than my kind of perfect. I'll hold you to that. So, oh. this is it. The last article. Uh, assuming you're signing off. Of course, of course. Right. Michael, it's really, really great. Thanks. You know, I'm on a book tour this week, but I hear that Halshford's throwing a party for me when I return. I assume you're going to be there. Oh, um, absolutely. Good. All right, bye. I'll try not to get pregnant again before I get back. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, is Calvin here? He's playing with this kid. Okay. Who is the greatest spud in the world? Who is the greatest spud in the whole world, mister? Is it you? What? <laughs> 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 Makes me want to dance. How about you? Huh? And I turn you. And I pip you. And I turn you. And I put you. What? Hi. Cal, this looks amazing. Gotta take him already, huh? Um, guess we're having too much fun, big man. <clears throat> That's the last lesson. But I promise I will write you new songs on the bus, okay? Oh, hello. <laughs> so, um, when are you leaving? Next week. I still have to pack. Can I ask you a question? Um, the other day in the park. What did you mean? Do I really, uh, look different? Completely. 
He's changed you. I can see it. Yeah, I hope you don't mean the stretch marks. <laughs> Just talking a little deeper, thanks. Yeah. You've always been beautiful, Franny, but uh, now you, I don't know, now you have grace. Cal, come on already, we're late. Gotta go. Come on, I'll walk you through up. Is she a smoker? Come on, she looks like a smoker. Franny. I'm just saying, you know, if, if you're gonna have prancing naked thigh girl around her son, I'd prefer it if she put some pants on before she touched him. I'll have her put her pants on. Good. Excuse me. Can I get a gimlet? Make it a double. Hey, handsome, what you drinking? So, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to bid a fond farewell to the inimitable Michael Tate. We hate to see him leave, but we're going to pass the torch to our next guest essayist, who will be chosen by our new features editor, the ever-charming Francesca McKenzie. <laughs> to manage not to screw everything up after all. Oh. <laughs> I'm just going to go over here. Uh well, congratulations, Miss Features Editor. Oh, I thank you. So I guess this brings to an end our literary affair, huh? Well, I, for one, am thrilled to have the work behind us. Oh, oh, I see you're glad to be rid of me, are you? <laughs> Completely the opposite, actually. But I think you knew that. I also think we've waited too long for a second date. Don't you? I've ever met a woman who understood my mind as well as you do. What about Lester? I have to admit that at first the whole single mom thing was a bit exotic, but um, you make it worth trying. And seriously, he's a great kid. I mean, you hardly know he's there. So, Michael, we're waiting for a few words of wisdom. Yeah. Um, well, let's face it, we're attracted, we're like-minded, and the job's over, so I can't think of one good reason why we shouldn't be together. Can you? I don't know, what the hell am I, up here talking to myself? <laughs> think it over. Give me calls. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's very kind. Um, well, despite a few hiccups along the way. Okay, he just kissed you in public. I think that's legally binding. All right, you just got a promotion, and Mr. Pulitzer all within five minutes. If I didn't love you, I'm telling you I would hate you. Yeah, everything is, um, perfect. What? Look at me. Why are there tears? No, no, no. Thank you very much. No, there should be no tears. Just hold bless, okay? Oh, oh, here. Hey, you hold this. Franny. Baby, please tell me those are tears of joy. Afraid not, no. Okay, talk to me. What's going on? I'm kind of realizing that I probably made the biggest mistake of my life. What is it? Do you remember how, you know, we used to go on all those lousy dates and, and we would talk about how great it would be to finally find the guy? Yeah. Well, I found him. But I let him go. Okay, honey, I'm not following you. Okay. You know that I've been dreaming of the perfect guy since I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And Michael is everything that I thought I wanted. But Calvin is the one that I belong with. Are you sure? Are you really, really sure? Well, then, honey, you gotta tell him. I can't tell him. He's leaving on tour. He's going to Europe and he's dating this blonde girl with thighs like a 13 year old Russian athlete. Uh uh. Kordakova doesn't get him. You got dibs. 
When's he leaving? Any minute now. What are we doing standing here? What are you guys doing here? Um... I have to leave. Okay, look, don't go. Look, I haven't thought this through, so just... Just let me wing it. Okay? I, I'm an idiot. Calvin, I always thought that I, that I would... That I would fall in love at first sight, but I guess I had to look at you twice. Because you're not the guy that I thought you'd be. Thanks. No. No, that's... That's a good... Thing because I'm not who I thought I'd be. Go on. Okay. The thing is, what I'm, not, I'm trying to say in essence is that is that I love you, Cal. And it's not just because of Lester. It's because you hear a world that I'm deaf to. That that you loved our son before you even met him. That, that, that you loved me even though I was stupid and crazy and scared. So I guess, I guess now, um, the question is, can you take me back or uh, am I too late? because I know that I can be a lot to handle and that I'm asking you to give up the 
blonde, prancing, naked thigh girl for a life of, of, of diapers and Franny. chaos. Franny. She's dating my drummer. <laughs> now, ask me a question again. Will you take me back? I never really let you go. <laughs> okay, so maybe I don't have the castle yet, but I finally found my own happily ever after. <laughs> We all know the nursery rhyme. First comes love, then comes baby. Okay, so as usual, I screwed it up and got it backwards. But it doesn't really matter how it starts. All that truly matters is how it ends. Because the truth is, happy endings do exist. Maybe not how we always expected them, but that just makes it a thousand times better. Na na na!